Right, we'll move on to the main event. Something that I'll never understand about uh, us Brits. We love a bit of turkey at Christmas, and then we don't touch them again all year. I've always gone with a turkey butterfly. A turkey crown, as I say. Actually, a proper crown, traditionally, years ago, were actually on the bone. Yeah. But people come, and, and now what they call a crown is actually a boneless turkey butterfly. So what we've got here, boneless turkey butt, skin still on, a little bit of butter, wrapped in bacon. And I, I, when I were on Butcher's Row, I had a shop, I was like 19, 20 year old, and my idea was to just try and bring things a bit more modern, and no disrespect to any other butchers, but they were still on turkeys, uh, plain crowns, and I just thought, I'm gonna try and do something with a twist to try and knock a few customers in. Don't forget, you're on a row with 30 other butchers, so you have to try and do something a bit different. And people who had these, come back for them. I'm not saying I'm the first person ever to wrap a turkey in bacon, because I'm not, but we advertised them as a dressed crown, basted in butter, and, uh, you know, we have carried it on forever. I and think that's the most important thing, though. I mean, probably when you started this, people were just getting turkeys and they were scared of them. They were just banging it. That's probably why they've got the bad name. They're just banging them in an oven and forgetting about them. That's where they dry as old. So yeah. it's, got a, it's got a bit of a bad name at Christmas, but people still tend to want turkey. It's that traditional thing. And you've taken out any prep, really. Yeah, I mean, yeah. The skin's still on, yeah? Skin's still on, little bit of butter, little bit of salt and pepper, and then just wrapped in, in a nice... Uh, some I usually put either a little bit of streaky, but I always like a fatty bit of bacon towards the collar end. Yeah, and then you're going to get all that lovely fat melted in, making it beautiful. So we've got to do this justice when we cook it, really. So <clears throat> what I would suggest with this is, I know I feel like I'm... I'm playing the same record over and over and over, but we must start with a hot oven, because what we want to do is caramelise all this protein around here. Um, start with a hot oven, and then we'll drop the temperature down. But what we'll do is on the recipe cards for people, we'll make sure all the details are on there. And then halfway through cooking, unlike the pork and the beef, when we drop the temperature down, if we add a little bit of stock, not like a fancy stock, just like a stock pot with some boiling water, whisk down, that goes in, because you're going to get all the lovely flavour from the turkey, from the bacon, from the butter, from the high roast. All that juice is going to go into that stock, and then at the end, pour it out. Bit of bisto. I'm not even going to lie to you. Super easy. Best gravy you'll ever have. This is why I got a lead chef, because we don't talk crap. <laughs> no keep fancy. It, keep it simple, and it's proper and right. If you'll have me back next week, we'll show them how to do it proper. We'll do yours. We'll get a turkey breast from you. We'll do mine. We'll do them both. We'll compare. We'll get some pals around and have a glass of wine. How's that sound? 100%. That's what Meat Mansion's about. We're here. <laughs> that's, Meat Mansion. That's, what we're, that's, what, that's why we invested in it. That sounds it. So next week, me, you, turkey and veg. No problemo. Let's see what we can get here. Sorted.